Hello everyone, my name is Duc Viet Le and I am a PhD student at Purdue University. Uh, today we are going to present our work on enabling oblivious accesses to Bitcoin and other UTXO based blockchains. So this is a collaborative work with Adio Ahmad, Mohsen Mine, uh, Aniket Kate from Purdue University, uh, Lizzie Hatado from National University of Columbia and Brong Yong Lee from Seoul National University. So first to begin with, uh, some motivation of this work is, as we all know, uh, the size of the Bitcoin data has become too large to store in a resource contained device like mobile phone or personal laptop. So as uh, March of 2020, the size of uh, this database is around 269 gigabytes. So the current solution to address the storage issue is a uh, SPV client. The design of this solution relies on Nakamoto idea uh, in his white paper and it later standardized in Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 37. So uh, in, in, in this setting, the team client or the resource constraint client have to rely on other uh, full client for fetching transaction information uh, and transaction data. Uh, in this slide, uh, we give an overview on how today's solution works. Uh, the today's solution rely on the use of Bloom filter, in particular, when a thin client wants to fetch some data from the full client, it first loads all the addresses and transactions of interest into the Bloom filter. The Bloom filter later send in plane to the full client, and upon future request from the thin client, uh, the full client will scan, will use a filter to scan data, and send back only transaction and block that match the filter along with uh, the Merkle proof and everything. Uh, however, in ASAP 2014, Arthur Gervais and other researchers from ETH Zurich have shown a network layer attack on this approach. Uh, in particular, by collecting multiple filters from the same client, the adversary can guess uh, the addresses belong to the SPV client with high probability. So a natural solution for this approach is we need a full client that offers private accesses to the team client. So in particular, when a team client sends a request to the potential malicious full client, it will answer the request with some response. However, it should not know what data did the team client did fetch. Uh, so one solution for this is to use private information retrieval techniques. However, to our limited understanding, Pure cryptographic approach are not just scalable for this kind of problem in terms of uh, computational overhead and bandwidth overhead. So another approach is one can use oblivious RAM and trusted hardware to offer a generic PIR solution. Uh, in particular, the team client can assume uh, trusted hardware reside on the server and uh, this trusted hardware will perform access on the encrypted database on behalf of the uh, team client and uh, these accesses on the trusted database will be protected using ORAM. So in the next few slides, we will explain what uh, ORAM is and what trusted hardware we use for this work. So ORAM is a cryptographic primitive first introduced by Odette Gorech uh, to hide data access pattern of a program. There are several uh, design programs for ORAM but in this work, we use two constructions of three space ORAM, which is part ORAM and circuit ORAM. So in ORAM testing, there are uh, a client and a server. The server stores data blocks in a binary tree structure. The client maintains two local data structures, which are the position map, telling which path in the tree the block ID uh, the block belongs to. And the stash is used to store data retrieved from the server. In, it, in, the, in, the, in this example, we explain how part of RAM works. Let's say the client wants to fetch block ID number 4. It looks at the position map and identifies uh, block ID number 4 reside on part 3. It later requests the server to send back part 3 uh, to the client. It stores the whole part in the start, decrypt every block in the start, identify the block number 4 and perform either read or write action on the block. After finishing the action, the client now needs to rerandomize the position of the block 
by assigning the block a new path. In this case, let's say it assigns block ID for part 1. Then, uh, therefore, block 4 will need to be rewritten at the root node because, as we can see, the only overlap between part 1 and part 3 is the root node. So, it will request the server to store this new block, uh, store this new path into the server. So all the logistic and data structure implemented on the client side as known, are known as the ORAM controllers. And the tree-based ORAM access can be generalized into a combination of two operations, read path and eviction. So the main idea of this work is we, we use ORAM to hide the access pattern of team client on the blockchain data. Next, we discuss about the trusted execution environment. Uh, for, for this work, we use Intel XGX as our instance for T. There are two important properties that we need from Intel XGX. First is the attestation mechanism. So Intel XGX allows a client to remotely authenticate the XGX. Secondly is the cost isolation. So the Intel XGX can set aside adjusted memory regions known as the enclave for cost isolation. The XGX processor makes sure that no other program can access this memory region. So for this work, we, we argue that we can implement ORAM controller inside the enclave and the clients can remotely authenticate this Intel FGA and the Intel FGA will perform ORAM accesses on the behalf of the client. Now going back to the ORAM architecture we mentioned before, now they are no longer the client. The client now becomes the enclave and the server now becomes the untrusted memory region. Uh, however, combining ORAM and T as a solution for the blockchain uh, introduced several technical challenges. Uh, in the next few slides, we will explain what are the, the challenges and how we will address them. So the first challenge is the storage overhead. So using ORAM, as it, it is incurs a constant storage blow up. In particular, that if we use a primary suggested by the paper, uh, we will expect 8 time blow up for part ORAM and 4 time blow up for circuit ORAM. So if we just store the Bitcoin blockchain into ORAM tree structure, it will result like 1.6 terabyte of blockchain data. To address the problem, we need to look at individual transactions of Bitcoin. Bitcoin transactions are formed by different data inputs and data outputs. When a client wants to send money to other recipients, it creates transactions using output that belong to it and that are not used as input before as new input in the, in the new transaction. New output now encodes the data of the recipient addresses and the value of the money it wants to send. Output that are not used as input before is called the unspent output. They are necessary information for client to determine the balance and form new transaction. And the collection of these unspent outputs is called the UTXO set. For this work, uh, we argue that T3 should only maintain this data set uh, via oblivious update, and T3 should only provide team client with oblivious access to this UTXO set. So the size of this data set is only around 2.8 GB at the time we tested our prototype of the, prototype of the our implementation. Therefore, the storage blow up is 24 GB for part of RAM and uh, 12, GB, 12 GB for circuit ORAM and which, in our opinion, is acceptable for the implementation of the system. So the second challenge is a lack of concurrency in traditional ORAMs. Uh, in particular, we recall that an ORAM access is a combination of two operations, read part and eviction. Uh, the eviction procedure is a procedure that causes writing on the tree. Okay, so therefore, if there is a new client uh, send a request during the eviction procedure. Their request will get blocked by this eviction. Uh, similarly, in, in our setting, a Bitcoin network generates a new Bitcoin block every 10 minutes. So the new Bitcoin block can generate up to 1000 of ORAM update requests. So if a client send a request during this update, their, again, their request will get blocked by this update procedure. So to address the uh, problem of concurrency, we introduced two ORAM tree, one read tree and one original ORAM tree. The idea here is to split an ORAM access into two operations, into two different trees. 
the read part perform on the read tree and the evasion perform on the original tree and uh, uh, we require the system to synchronize these two tree every uh, every 10 minutes at least uh, for Bitcoin and uh, this allow concurrent access on the read tree and uh, why introduce a non-blocking eviction on the original tree so on the security of this proposal right, we argue uh, for we argue that for a rational SPV client for each address it should only request uh, one ORAM access during the in an interval of 10 minutes. Right? However, even though if the SPV client is is not rational by using multiple requests for the same address, the system still ensures the privacy of the client by synchronizing the two tree every 10 minutes. Uh, on the efficiency side, because we allow uh, parallel accessing on the read tree, if we improve the latency from the perspective of the SPV client. The third technical challenge is the limitation of Intel SGX on the size of the trusted memory region. So the size of the processor reserve memory is limited to around 96 megabytes. So what it means in our system is that uh, the size of the position map and the start cannot exist 96 megabytes. So therefore the naive use of ORAM will quickly cause the PRM to running out of memory. So we note that, we note that look, allocating more memory is possible, but the performance will significantly decrease. So, uh, however, this problem has been uh, studied in the ORAM literature. So the solution here is to use recursive ORAM construction. Uh, the idea uh, here is we can reduce the size of the position map by storing the, the original position map into another ORAM structure in the untrusted memory region. And by keep doing that, we can reduce the, uh, we keep we can keep doing this until the size of the position map fit the outlet memory and this is what we did in our system so the fourth technical challenge is uh, we need uh, in t3 we need to tell t how to map bitcoin addresses into oram block the first naive approach is to use bitcoin address at oram block the problem with this approach is that the size of the bitcoin address is too big to store in the position map and the size of the position map will become too large for the outlet memory the second approach is to deterministically hashing addresses into ORAM blocks. Again, the problem with this pro approach is that if the mapping is known to the adversary, the adversary can always overflow the block with its own output, and the output of on it user will get discarded. So to address this challenge, we use pseudo random function to map Bitcoin address into ORAM in T3. However, there is a uh, secret key that fitted into the pseudo function that is generated and kept secure by T. And at a high level, this means the mapping between uh, Bitcoin address and ORAM block is kept hidden by T. So in our paper, we propose a different mapping for different trade-off in terms of uh, storage, and we refer readers to our paper for the discussion. Uh, However, uh, it's still to introduce two problems. First, as we mapping something from bigger domain into something of smaller domain, we introduce collisions. Uh, but we argue this is a standard map load analysis, and one can always show that ORAM block will have less than certain number of outputs uh, with overwhelming probability. The second problem is that some address inherently have more output than others, and how would we address this issue? So we did some analysis analysis on the UTXO set, and we found out that 92% have uh, 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 addresses have only have up to two outputs. So in our implementation, we therefore limit the number of outputs for each addresses to uh, only two to cover 92% of all users. So we also note that choosing a different number of output is possible, but there will be some trade-off in terms of storage, uh, blow-up. Again, we refer to our paper for this trade-off. So, to put things together, we have an overview of our system. When the SPV client wants to perform a read access on the UTXO set, it perform it connect to the server, perform a remote uh, attestation with the Intel SGX, and establish a secure channel with this SGX. And any future request from the client, uh, the the read request will be split into two different operations. Read part performed on the read ORAM tree 
and uh, eviction performed on the original ORAM sheet. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, by doing this, we allow parallel uh, accessing of the RISC-1 ORAM tree to improve the latency from the SPV client. Uh, on the update side, the, the Bitcoin network is the only party who perform updates on the original ORAM tree. Therefore, when a Bitcoin block arrives from the network, the unclip needs to verify the proof of work of this block by using its own storage of a Bitcoin block header. After, after verifying the proof of work, it performs a batch uh, write on, on the original ORAM chip. Once this update is finished, the system will synchronize these two chips. We also note that during this update, the system is still able to handle requests from clients. And this is an overview of how our system works. So for the evaluation of the system, we tested uh, the performance of our prototype on two different construction of ORAM, part ORAM and circuit ORAM. So this is the performance of the original ORAM uh, access or the eviction procedure. Uh, and this is the performance of read one access. Uh, because there is no eviction on the read one access, the performance of these type of accesses uh, better compares the performance of the original accesses. Moreover, by having two different trees, uh, read tree and origin, original trees, we allow concurrent read on the read one tree, and it is a performance of the uh, of the concurrent read using different number of threads. So in this figure, we compare the performance of our system with the current SPV clients using four different four positive read. Moreover, we compare our system with by objects database which is a concurrent work that also uses ORAM and T for the blockchain setting. However, in the system, they only use non-recursive uh, part ORAM and T as it is. Um, we re-implemented re the system using the parameter from that paper. And uh, we show that uh, if the system using recursive part ORAM, uh, the performance of the system will be significantly improved. Uh, in this figure, we, we can see the performance of T3 is shown in the dust, uh, dust black line and blue line. Uh, and the performance of our system is better due to the use of read one access, which does not require eviction. So in this figure, we compare our system with uh, SPV client in terms of bandwidth overhead. In the current SPV uh, client that you bloom filter, due, due to the four positive rate, uh, there can be additional in relevant data sent by full, the full client. So as you can see, if the four positive, the higher the four positive rate, uh, the higher the communication cost uh, for the full client and the SPV client. And since the system, since our system rely on the SGX to extracting uh, relevant data, the amount of data need to be sent uh, by the full client is significantly smaller. So in, con in conclusion, we developed a system designed that supports large-scale oblivious accesses on the utxo based blockchain by using oblivious RAM and trusted execution environment. Uh, we also address several challenges of the naive use of ORAM and T for blockchain setting um, by introducing uh, concurrency design and uh, the use of recursive ORAM. We also provide an implement prototype implementation of our code in the following link. And that concludes my talk. Uh, thank you for listening and I am happy to take any questions.